Hi everybody, welcome to Rob's Top 50 Games of All Time. No, huh? That, I, I, I guess maybe I should pay for some sound effects, huh? Yeah, you think you would, but let's face it, I'm not, I'm not tech, technically savvy enough to, to do that, so you're just going to get the fake ones as it comes. Well, I'm really excited about the rest of this list. Um, I, I think that you'll really find and enjoy what I have coming and as we cut down this down uh, after we do this we've gotten 20 games in the book look for another one on, on this coming Friday uh, and I'm trying to do two a week so we can get to the live show and do all 50 we'll talk about the first 40 and then do the big top 10 countdown live I think that's a lot of fun and really cool so, without further ado, number 40 is coming up. Number 40 is a game that I discovered, oh, six years ago, seven years ago. I think it's more seven, more seven years ago, six, uh, six years ago. Um, it's a GMT game. It's a 4X game. I was, I was really, really blown away by it, and I got to play it. It was one of the few games I got to play at a Dice Tower Con and that's Space Empires. See, I don't even have to put the little graphic here because I'm just going to hold it up in the corner here. Isn't that where it normally goes? Yeah, there you go. Space Empires, a great 4X game. You would think this is a lot more complicated than what it is, but Jim Crone made a phenomenal, phenomenal game here. I really enjoy playing this. I like the expansions. They're supposed to come out with even more expansions. And for this, this game, doing the math and everything like that, you think, you know, when, when you're buying resources and spending your resources and calculating everything and, and all that stuff, because as you expand and get planets, you start to collect resources and then you're able to build better ships to explore. But then you run into like a hidden area where you turn over something and it could be a total disaster for you. Great game, a lot of fun. You could play it with two players, you could play with four players. But it's one of those 4X games that really works well with two. And I think that's a home run because not all of us can get a bunch of people to play all the time. So this game really, really stands out and I don't want it to dump over. I really enjoy this and this is something that I really need to do live so you guys get a good feel of it. But number 40 space empires now here's one that i think is really going to kind of shock you but my number 39 game of all time which is good because if you think of how many games there are out there but for you guys you may think i think this game is bad and that is warhammer 40k all 30 years of it now when i talk about the series when i talk about 40k k i talk about from Rogue Trader all the way to today. This, it's it's had so many ups and downs and in-betweens that I really love 40K, but my biggest problem is I love the history. It has personal meaning to me, so I always have a soft spot for it, but it has gone through so many revisions and every time they revise it and it is a, becomes a good game, it gets messed up along the way. It becomes cheesy, overpowered, certain armies just roll over other armies, and it loses its lackluster. It's a game that when you take it to go play against other people, sometimes those people aren't the nicest people in the world. And it becomes something that's not enjoyable. A game like this should be enjoyable. Now. As far as the models, you know, the beginning rule sets, you know, some some of the additions that they've come out with, this this is the benchmark for miniature gaming. Okay? It always has been. Games Workshop will always be the benchmark for miniature gaming. But as much as I love it is as much as I hate it, and that's why it's not higher on my list. So Warhammer 40k at 39. I know that's a shock for some of you. This next game is something that, that again, is something that I played by myself. And 
as more and more editions of it came out, it became this huge, massive game. You talk about Talisman being awesome and, and massive. But Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror, I think, is a great game because you can have a bunch of people together playing it. And this is a game I learned and played with Richard Launius uh, at the Dice Tower. And it just sucked me in, and I had to make sure I had everything for it. As a matter of fact, I still... I, I have stuff that isn't even opened that needs to be added in. But Arkham Horror, I absolutely love. I, I painted all the figures. I have a great time when I play it. But I also have a great time playing it when I play it solo. When I, when I sit there play by myself, it's as good as an experience as I play with others. Closing those gates is just an adventure. This is always will be a classic game to me. And Arkham Horror, believe it or not, makes the list and I'll, I'll give you a little hint Eldritch Horror isn't on here I played it it's okay but for me the old Arkham Horror just stands out it's it's theme it's it has so much I just I'm sucked into that universe the minute I open up that box and for me Arkham Horror is going to be at number 38 Number 37 is a game that to this day I regret. Um, I gave my first edition of it to somebody who probably isn't even on this channel anymore. And I think I got taken advantage of because I, I was given a story. But uh, it could be, could be not, maybe not. But um, that's Dungeon Quest. I really love that game. In the, now, in recent times I have gone out and repurchased the first edition but as each edition has come I've always loved this game because of how impossible it is to play I have the games workshop edition I think I still have if we look on our thing well a lot of things have moved around of course but I, oh there it is it's way up there up top the dungeon quest I have the newer uh, final uh, final fantasy uh, fantasy flight edition I love this game I love this game because it's impossible. And when you can just go, 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 die. <laughs> I think that's great. It, it, it brings threat. It's not one of those games where you get knocked out and you can you know, come back. No, scrap that guy, grab another guy. Let's see if you can catch up. And I, I, I really enjoy how quick the game could be or how you can get to a certain point and now you've got to try to get out but oh my god the sun's going down that dragon's going to come out and, and take me you know even though i'm just running out with, with with maybe 50 bucks you know all that for 50 bucks and you're on your way out think you know when you really think about that that's that's about as good as you're not loaded on both both shoulders if you really want to try to be greedy and try to get that five thousand well you know good luck to you because you still got to get out of there so uh, for me, it's it's a fun game. You're always watching the guy next to you. None of, nobody trusts each other. I really, I really, really love Dungeon Quest. Uh, one of my uh, my favorite games of of all time at number 37. And number 36. Well, the rest of the games on this list and the games behind this particular game are all because of this one game and I have to look at the game as a series as a whole and at number 36 is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons the role-playing game I love it I you know for it to be high on this list after all these years you know and still hold a, a, a spot do I love the first edition? Of course. Did I love the second edition, the third edition, fourth edition? Yes, they all vary on different scales for me. But as they they made it easier for you to bring miniatures in and do different things, this is the the foundation for half of these dungeon crawls that you are playing today. Because without this, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. And this game here is very near and dear to my heart and it comes in at 36 even though I don't play it as much because again the reason it's higher up you do need a lot of people to play it 
um, you know, a good amount of people. And for me, that's hard to get those type of people in. Do I love the game? Absolutely. I have fond memories of it, and it, and even to today, when we tried to get something together, or you know, no no matter how long it lasts, it is a game that is very near, very solid, and the foundation for so so much. So at number thirty six, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. This is a newer game at thirty five. Um, and it replaces a lot of a lot of games and you're gonna find that on this list are some shockers that you wouldn't expect out of me but I do have a very near dear heart for work replacement games and this game completely knocked one game completely off my charts and that's Champions of Midgard now the Jarl who is no longer the Jarl because we have to count this now who, who defeated him. For us this game is just a fantastic well produced great game and the expansions even add more more stuff that make it even more fun uh, and I really really just really love this game and this is a game that is a family favorite and we enjoy playing it and we can play it with three people and have a great great time. It completely took I was it I of the beholder no um I of the beholder oh my goodness my goodness if I can think of the game of course somebody will, will name it but the D Dungeons and Dragons one um, it got knocked off the list see I don't even think about it um oh god see now that's gonna bother me but I'm gonna leave this in here I'm not gonna edit it out Maybe I'll put the thing up in the corner and just just so it'll tease me the entire time, and and everybody will be screaming it at the TV, right? <laughs> there you go. But it, it completely knocked that out off the charts because this game was just that good. So at 35, we have Champions of Midgard. <clears throat> this next game is an Eric Lang game. Uh, it's a newer game, but it totally killed Super Dungeon Explorer for me. I mean, just drove a stake in its heart and completely eliminated it and that is Arcadia Quest Arcadia Quest is a masterpiece there are just so much to it it's a lot of fun it's PvE PvP um, everybody trying to outdo each other you got monsters running all over the place and just a lot of fun trying to take people out and get what you need and get out and accomplish the mission I love this game. It kind of killed Super Dungeon Explorer for me, even though I have the latest edition, which is Super Dungeon Arena, which is supposed to improve a lot of things. But in a law in the long run, I think because this is so good and how much I love it, I have to say that well, Super Dungeon Explorer. But hey, Arcadia Quest, you you've come in at number thirty. Now, I, you think that would be higher because of Janice's love for it and how much time we spent painting it. But it's right where I think it is at 34, and I think that's a, a good, good spot for it. Number 33, one of my all-time favorites. Now, I've talked to you uh, a few times during this list about games that, that have molded me through the years. Now, my gaming... My gaming life probably started in 72, 73 with the simple game of Monopoly. Maybe even 70. That's how long I've gone back. So you think 47 years of gaming, uh, you know, picking up and playing different games, board games, you know, from Shoots and Ladders all the way to Monopoly to Risk uh, to all, you know, all the war games from Panzer, Blitz, to Skirmish, and the American Heritage series, um, Midway, things like that, that this particular game was just another evolution in the stage. And I'm going to say that Advance, uh, I mean ASL, Advanced Squad Leader, is a game that is so in-depth and so has such a great cult following that the manual has to come in a binder. Okay? They actually come out with starter kits.
to help you along the way in the game. This is a fantastic, wonderful World War II game that I absolutely adore. And coming in at 33, the reason it comes in at 33 is because of its complex complexity. Now, I love complex games. I am somebody that really enjoys them. And though I am not very good at games, period, it doesn't mean that I don't love a highly strategic game. It sucks me in. It pulls me in. I'm immersed. I'm, I'm, I am just always planning things out, trying to do the right thing, and I really love that. And then it comes down to a die roll, whether I fail or, you know, nothing's for sure, no matter what you do. And Advanced Squad Leader is just a fantastic, wonderful, well-produced, put-together game. And I have so many of the expansions that I thoroughly enjoy this game and love this game with all that I am. Okay, somebody's out there doing something. That's cool. So... Let's go a little further. Battlelore at number 32. Battlelore, the original Battlelore, not the newest version, but I'm going to combine them as a series, okay? But when I got uh, Richard, Bur uh, Richard Berg's, Borg's first edition of this, I was completely blown away and absolutely head over heels with this game. I loved all the expansions, how you were able to do a hundred year war, add orcs, this, that, and the other, and when you get it to the table, this game still holds up today. I have the first edition, I will not let go of the first edition. The second edition's good, but it's still not the first edition for me. I love that game, and it means the world to me. I think, uh, you know, when you start thinking of uh, Battle Cry, and all Memoir 44, and things like that, this game here, you know, with that system, the card system, um, the way it plays, the different boards, all the different things from from the uh, battle lore. It's a shame that they didn't keep going with the new battle lore, but I have to say that I absolutely adore this, and I'm a big fan of Richard Borgs. Now, finally, killing uh, the first the first the, the, uh, at number 31 and actually the last game that we're going to talk about when Justin was growing up he was a big fan of the figures Mage Knight he was absolutely a huge and massive fan and he just absolutely adored it so when they came out with the the Mage Knight board game we decided to check it out and Vlad had done a tremendous job on it. We play this game to this day. I, there's so much to it, but it is just such a great game. Not only that, you know, do we get to play with the figures and stuff like that that they have, and I wish they'd come out with more expansions for it, but it's such an in-depth game and such a joy to play and do and, and enjoy. I absolutely love Mage Knight. Uh, and that is what's going to come in at number 31. Well, there you have it, another 10. We have from 30 all the way to 21 for Friday. And I can tell you this much, there's going to be a lot more surprises on there. Now, a lot of these games here are, are just my personal opinion and what I think. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, for me, these are the things that are very personal to me, and that's why they're so high on this list. But I think you're going to be in for a lot of surprises as we go forward. So, there you go. We have it there. I hope you enjoy this, and look for number 30 to 21 coming up in a few days. Until next time, I'm Rob Warren, and we will see you soon.